Hello, I'm David Vialic. And I'm Spets Gonzalez. And this is Stripped, brought to you by William Hill. In this show, we talk to celebrity guests as we get nostalgic talking about retro football shirts from uh, back in the day. That's right, our guests pick four shirts to tell the story of their life. The first one, the haunted one, the unforgettable one, and the named one. Well, we've got a special guest today. That's right. This guy is a rapper, mm. he's an author, he's a West Ham fan. Mm. He's a broadcaster as he's well. He's a broadcaster right. as well, man. He's a legend. He's a multi-talented. Multi-talented. Good <laughs> friend of mine, man. Mm. In fact, two-time, we have to say two-time, there's no rules, Mobiles, right? Yeah, that's right. For best gospel act. And he's done 10 albums. 10? Ten? 10 albums. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't stop, bro. <laughs> People, give it up for Governor B! Governor B! Love, man. I, I just, uh, that was a sick intro, but I recently won another MOBO award, so that's free, but... Free oh, MOBOs? Yeah, 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 free MOBOs. For the gospel? Free. Yeah, 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 So listen, you got free. You might as well loan us another <laughs> two, man. Well, there's three of us saying that. Yeah. Yeah. You probably rack up a few awards of your own yeah, coming up, man. One no? day, one day. I don't know much about the gospel scene. Mm. What is it like as a, as a music scene? Like, is there a scene? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit confusing. I feel mm. like maybe here in the UK, like five, ten years ago, Everyone that made like faith-based music mm. was in like one scene. But then post like 2015, got people like Stormzy making like Blinded by Your Grace, Kendrick Lamar mm. talking about faith. It's a bit more fluid. Mm. So um, it's weird because it's the only genre that's defined by its content rather than its sound, isn't it? Mm. Um, it's interesting. But yeah, there's a scene, there's people doing their thing, but they cross over. So like one day I'll be like gospel stuff, gram stuff, like a bit of garage, a bit of hip hop. It's very fluid. Mm. But yeah, man. Your music fluid. Of course. Music fluid. Mm. I mean, you've worked with the likes of, you know, uh, Retch Free 2, D Double E. Yeah, yeah. I was that like, man, because I mean, D Double for me. I'm, I used to be a grand MC myself. Oh, sir? Yeah, but I was. Like, you were good, man. Was I good? Yeah, you were funny. Yeah, I just wasn't getting views. Well, like, it's proper putting out music in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but Freestyle. Yeah, for a long time, I used to, I used to spit bars. Yeah, I, I was in Aftershock with Bruiser. Mad. Yeah, Sick, like, man. Yeah. Tiny was in that as well. Tiny Temple yeah, was in yeah, it as well, yeah. But none of them talked to me now for some reason. <laughs> but you, you actually went number one. Yeah, recently. In, recently. In January. It was random. I was on Sky Sports um, and they just asked me to do a little freestyle. You know, sometimes when they find like, you're like, oh, can you rap for us? Yeah. And then I just did a joke thing about the players that West Ham were looking to get in. Someone on Twitter saw it, put it out online. And then it went kind of mad, so viral, man. released the song, but then donated the proceeds to a young girl called Isla Caton, oh, who was struggling mm. with cancer at the time. And mm. yeah, it went number one, but yeah, it was a great thing to be a part of, man. And but I was pissed off at the same time, though. Why? Because I've been making music for like 10 years, <laughs> blood. None of my, none of my music's got yeah. number one, blood. Then I do a joke thing about West Ham and it's... Welcome to my world, man. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't that show you how mad the internet is? Yeah, is it that is nuts, bro. You can just have one moment where you've, you've literally just improvised what not, yeah, put it bro. on, someone's seen it, and then you go number one. That's why I tell people, man, you can't manufacture this stuff. Like, mm. it's, so, you, you can't tell what's going to connect and what's not, so just do you, man, and some stuff will take off, some stuff won't, but you keep it moving. Mm. I love that, man. Go on, we're we're going to take you back, you know, because on this show, we love, like, the nostalgia. We do love must, the nostalgia. Do I pronounce it right? Nostalgia? No, nostalgia, no. No, nostalgia. nostalgia. That sounds like a city in Italy. Yeah, it sounds like PK Humble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. He likes to, he likes to twist words. So, um, nostalgia. Nostalgia. So, we like to get, you know, nostalgic on the show. So, we're going to talk about the shirt that made you fall in love with the game. Mm. And that's the first one. Mm. And we're going with the West Ham United home Dr. Martins from 1999 Classic. to 2001 home kit. Classic, bro. I grew up in East London as mm. well, bro. So Where? Uh, Custom House. Wow. I was born in. Lived there for 12 years, then moved out to, to Essex. But yeah, that Dr. Martin's kit, sensational. Sensational. It is iconic. Of course. We wear Dr. I don't know. Martin's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mad. I think it's just a combination because you've got, you've got like Feeler as a sponsor, which is yeah. also quite a cool brand. And mm. you've got Dr. Dr. Martin, Martin's. which is a cool brand. Then you've got the players that were playing for him at the time. West Ham is such a fascinating club. Mm. It really, I think, is London. Yeah, man. And it's the East. Of course, like, bro. Like, East London, West Ham. What players do you remember when you look at that shirt? I get sad, though, because none of them stayed, but <laughs> Rio Ferdinand, oh, mm. obviously, classic. Yeah. Frank Lampard, mm. Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe, legend. Absolute bagsman. Um, and then you've got people like 
Thomas Repka, bro. That is Repka. You bro, remember Thomas bro. Repka? Do it. Yeah, Baller, check, bro. Was that check? Baller. Check, yeah, check the center check back. Yeah. yeah. Absolute madman. Um, but yeah, that shirt was was good times. And obviously, the guy, man, cult hero, Paolo De Canio. Which is why I fell in love with the shirt, to be fair. Because my boy, he's called Joe Widdison. He was playing for the youth team at the time. Mm-hmm. And he was a ball boy. So he got me tickets to some of the games. So I would go down. Sick. Few games. It's West Ham in it, so we're playing people like Derby County some weeks, other weeks it's like Chelsea or whatever. But one of the tickets he got me was to a Wimbledon game where the Canio scored the kind of it would harp the volley slash from the side of kick city, from yeah. the side. Trevor Sinclair pinged it into him. And I was there. So from then, I was West Ham because I actually grew up supporting Man United. I don't know why. Uh, and not not a lot of people know that. Um so I'm probably gonna get a lot of stick, but So you changed teams? Out? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. Well, technically, did. technically, yeah. You transfer, <laughs> but everyone has an age, yeah. <laughs> everyone has an age, yeah. <laughs> Where you like truly fall in love with football. Yeah. yeah. Until then, you're just going along with it. <clears throat> so at school, primary school, everyone was supporting Man U, innit? So mm. I thought, let me just do that. But when I had my own relationship start with football, and I went to the West Ham games and stuff, I was like, fam, this is home, and I'm mm. from East London. It makes sense. So yeah, I switched teams at about ten years old, ten, eleven. So like ten, eleven. But I'll be honest with you, mm. that, that's kind of happened to me at thirty. 29, what? 30. Well, you changed teams? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Who you yeah. now? Well, like, obviously I was Liverpool. And I still do love Liverpool. Like, I love going to the ground. I love the stadium. Um, but I love the culture around the club. But because I've seen them win things now, mm. it was fun. The struggle was fun. And then when, when we've won everything, I'm sort so, of like... I'm done now. I'll leave you guys to it. <laughs> I don't know I, about I, that. I've gone to Spurs a little bit. What? Because I live right next to the ground. That's mad to me. Yeah, but you did, a, you did that, though. No. Yeah, no. I have a local <laughs> no, team he's gone, he's gone from, from a top four, top five team to, to okay. a top four, top five team. Blood. When okay. I moved from Manchester United to West Ham, they've just got off the back of winning a the treble, point. bro. That's a good point. Yeah. And That's I've a... gone to West Ham that are relegation scrapping. Mm, but let's not forget, I, I do support Red Star Belgrade. Yeah, that's your, yeah, home, that's like, your home time. That's my, like, I actually care and I really get into it. I think, like, in, in the UK, I think, like, Premier League football, you should be, it should be transient. You should be able mm. to switch up and be like, so players go all the time. Mm, Why like, can't we as fans, as I think Specs has talked about it before, you used to go out on loan, didn't you? Yeah. So if, when Arsenal used to lose, and I, I would loan myself to other clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 Premier League clubs. Yeah. I know it sounds <laughs> that's, mentally. That's but it's the truth. It, why not? Like, it's, it was easier for me. Do you know it helps my, my, you know. <laughs> the loan thing is mad. I don't justify that. But my one justification for you yeah. is you support the closest Premier League team to where you live. Because like I, I used to move around a lot as well and people used to criticise me like, why do you support Liverpool? I'd be like, I love him. I started when I was five. So now that I'm 30, I feel like I should be, I have, I have the, the timing. Way. The timing's a bit mad though. The timing's a bit like, mad at 30. Mane is gone. Do you know what I mean? That trio of Salah, Mane, Firmino exactly. is done. I Mane's, feel like Liverpool's on the... I'm sad that Mane's now. gone. He was a top, top. Who are you learning yourself to, bro? Oh, I was learning. I, 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 went, I went Man City. Did you go Man City? They, I went Man City, remember, because they're winning. <laughs> yeah. But what I've done now, what I've done recently, <laughs> I've done a new thing that works. Okay. I've um, obviously I'm an Arsenal fan. I've lived near Arsenal mm. my whole life, from Islet and etc. But um, I play for manager. Yeah. Like yeah right yeah. now, as a big man with kids, mm. I play that game all the time. Yeah. I pretend I'm in, I'm on Zoom. I told the missus I'm on Zoom. Is it still the same? Play manager. Remember back in the day where it used to be like. I, the time would be what you need to do to so change your boxers if you've been playing for like 23 hours. Yeah, they still that? say that. They still say that. Yeah, they still say that. I've still got the same boxers. <laughs> but the problem, I, the problem with me is if I'm managing a team, yeah. I now want to support them in real life. So now I'm a mm. Burnley fan. I'm worried for this generation, bro, man. You know what I'm even mad at. It's different. It's different. Bro, nothing makes sense anymore, bro. They're in the championship. Yeah. We had lockdowns. Like, anything goes. Anything, anything bro, goes, man. Anything goes. Who <laughs> thought I wouldn't be able to, I'd only be able to go outside for an hour. Anything goes, bro. There was a van going around my park going, you must go home. <laughs> I'm like, well, where am I? I mean, what is this? Yeah, that thing you see the Simpsons is happening in real life. Nah, yeah. So I feel like football, and football, what do you know what I mean? We've changed. You know what, man. you know what's funny? You talk about generation, yeah? Because going back to Palo de Canio, yeah? Mm. I remember watching Palo de Canio for West Ham against Everton at Goodison Park. Mm. West Ham on attack. But the goalkeeper for Everton goes down. He's yeah, hurt his yeah, knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But the Kenny was basically like in the in the box waiting for the ball to come in. I just his the ball up. comes yeah, in and he catches up. the ball, which is handball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's a yellow. <laughs> but you know what? He said, no, no, no. Let the physio come and sort. We did love him. There's never ever going to be another like him, man. I ain't what seen that today. About. I've never seen that. Do you know the sickest thing about the Kenyon for mm. a West Ham fan is if you're in a playground and then you've got the Man U fans talking about 
Van Nistelrooy, Arsenal fans talking about Henri. We didn't have no one, but mm. with the Canyon, you can say the Canyon's name mm. and it gets respect in the playground. No, that was the sickest thing about him. He's such a G, isn't he? Mm. He's a character. We... You remember when he went to management? Oh, and he went on his knees. <laughs> and his knees looked more muddy. Man. And that was a moment where he pushed over the ref as well. Oh, beefing oh. his players. One of them, he dragged one of the players into the tunnel. Yep, the, the yeah, the, the, the stra- I was at Swindon. Subbed off his goalkeeper in the first half. Uh, yeah, he was, he, and, and uh, in the interview, he said, look, that's Wes, it's not Peter Cech. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best manager I've seen. Like, mm. he's better than all these <laughs> new managers that we see that are doing the club. And he's got a West Ham tattoo as well. Yeah. Like he's, he's a, a proper player, adopted Italian East Londoner. Be honest, did you, did you, did you, like, you know, because he's a legend. Like, for example, with me, I had Ian Wright mm. on my head, like as a like, trim. Did you go for the bull patch? Like, just, <laughs> come on, bro. No, no, no. He's a no, preserve, never. Preserve, no, 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 no. no. Come on, bro. And he's Italian as well, bro. Come I would have. If the Canyo played for Arsenal, when I would have You'd get a bull patch. I would get a bull patch. Why no, people don't do I don't yeah, care. How, you cut, though, how would you cut a bull patch, though? Just you just remember. basically just grow, you'll grow your hair. Yeah. Like, so you say that your hair's like that, yeah. Like this. How do you make a perfect bowl pack? Just here, just, just shape here. What do you mean you had Ian Wright at the back of your head? <laughs> so as Ian, in your name? Yeah. <laughs> Ian Wright. Yeah. And, I, and I had a ponytail at the bottom. So basically you're saying like I should have had the canyon at the back of my head. No, I'm saying you should have the ball patch. So yeah, because yeah, man, I'm not gonna know I'm the canyon. <laughs> There's bear man with ball patches, man. And you should do it where your plaits are as well, just, just like that. Yeah, nah, nah, let's not do that, bro. Like, he's a cult hero. Big up the canyon, man. What a guy. I was literally gonna support West Ham because when I was in when I was in year eleven, yeah. there was a kid in my school. He was in like year eight, mm. but he was the best. Joe Cole. He went to your school? He went to my school, Sky Cole, So bro. he signed for West Ham. Like, very went to school early. with Joe Cole? I went to school with Joe Cole, yeah. Joe Cole, Danny Granville, that was a legend. So random. Man. You know what I mean? He was getting twists up in the playground. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't allowed to play football with them. Them days, I had to just study. <laughs> I had low, low first to pee and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. But um, talk to you about Joe Cole, man. Is yeah. that, because that's one of the best English players to ever exist. You I know we got way we need, Super but. talented. Obviously, in that team, with Ferdinand, Lampard, Carrick. Defoe, Carrick, Cole, players like that, he was the flair player. Yeah. So every time he got the ball, fans Skills. are up on their feet. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think you need that player that can make something happen out of nothing. But he was silky, English as well. But I didn't play like an English player, though. No. Because sometimes with English player, players from London or from ends, I feel like they wean out the cage football from yeah. you, bruv. But with him, he kept it, man, so... Can I remember yeah, goal against, that against Sweden? Oh, that was just a, a, I, I don't know outside don't foot volleys it. I don't get it. Top, people don't talk about it enough. That goal was brilliant, man. Nuts. The self-belief, though. Because you know nine times out of ten, that's Rosie. Yeah. Mm. And man, I'm shouting at you. Yeah, my mind it. It. So you're, you're a person that's obviously you know, stayed quite, I'd say, loyal to your area. Mm. You represent East London, you support West Ham. Um, so you've done a bit of grime. Was it a full circle moment, though, when you got did a track with DWE? Oh, oh he's sure. an East London legend. DW is the best. Yeah. I mean, me, he's, that's like... Yeah. For me, Kano gets DWE, Wiley. That's like the Mount Rushmore oh, what? from East London. Mm-hmm. No, Dizzy Rascal's there. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. Yeah, Dizzy Rascal's there. But yeah. for me, Wiley made me fall in love with Graham. Yeah, definitely. Kano's round the corner. I mean, mm-hmm. Upton Park, Forest Gate. And then DW is just the wheel up general. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I was gassed, man. And the track we did, I was so gassed to be working with him that we sampled one of his old bars and used it as a chorus. That's very original. Never heard that from another individual. And he's the coolest oh. guy, bro. The coolest guy, bro. What a bar. Yeah, he's sick, man. But for me, that was like, you've done all right in music, bro. Yeah. You, like, you beat the odds, bro. How did it, how did it come about? Um, we've been talking for a while. I see him randomly driving through Forest Gate. He was playing basketball. Is it? In like one of the outdoor playgrounds. Took his number, started following each other on Insta or whatever. And he's like, yeah, we got to work, man. I've heard your stuff. And I'm like, bruv, you're a legend. And then, yeah, track came and I could only hear him on it. So I sent it to him. But I thought, you know when people are like, yeah, we should work, bro. Yeah. Or oh, shout at me, bro. But yeah, they don't yeah. really mean it. I thought it was one of them ones. But yeah, he was on it, man. Dropped his verse, come down for the video. It was sick, bro. A real moment for me. All right, the next track we're going to talk about is the haunted one. This one, this one actually hurts me as yeah, well. This is the, the 2010 yeah. Uruguay home. We all have that one that hurts us. Ah, the shirt yeah, that yeah. just brings us painful memories. Nostalgic, but painful. Why this shirt, Governor, man? It's just the most hurtful, bro. 
I ain't feel emotional talking about it now. Like, mm. This is the only time I've ever cried because of football, bro. I was in Menorca because my manager at the time was getting married mm-hmm. during the World Cup. I don't know why I got married during the World Cup. Like, to howler. <laughs> good wedding, good wedding though. Don't like, get howler. married during World Cup, man. Come on, people. Yeah, that's poor. And I went with my ex, we was at a bar watching the game. And up until that point, Ghana were having a sick cup run, bro. Oh, Bruv. They were the winners. The I was, sick, the they beat Serbia. Run, I was gutted about them beating Serbia. Um, but otherwise, they were looking good, man. And the squad was hard. Like, hard. Asamoah John Mensah, Asamoah Jan. Montari. Montari, Stephen oh. Appiah. Appiah. Appia. Kevin Prince Boateng, bro. Yeah, he was, he was. Which meant all the gal. He was our Joe Cole. Bruv, he ran so yeah. even lost the sheep could walk, bruv. All the girls were, <laughs> all the girls were onto him. But the squad was good. Obviously, lost to Germany in the group stages, but we got through. And then USA, I wasn't that confident. I was like, bruv, it's good vibes, in it? Like, we've yeah. done well. Celebrations are a wave. We've been playing all right. And then we beat USA, bro. As some of Jan scored in extra time. And then it felt like the momentum, Manon was starting to believe, right, they could actually do a thing. And it was at that point that all the neutrals became yeah. Ghana fans, 100%, bro. 100%, yeah. And then obviously Uruguay has come now, man. That game, bro. Nuts. There were some worldies in that, in that game as well, I think. Kevin Prince both no, it's Montari. Montari, Montari, Montari scored. Montari, yeah. And then Diego so, Forlan scored a free kick. Swerved mad. I didn't like that goal. Why? Because the ball went in the middle of the, the goal. It was crazy. And I was thinking... No, but did you see the swerve before no, the it? The ball was crazy. Was there a swerve man. before it? The no. swerve was mad, bro. Because when I saw it again? first, I thought, how has he not saved this? The Jabulani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I've seen YouTube videos where they compare kicking a Jabulani and like a Premier League ball. The bro, Jabulani what's gone here? just goes like... Every, then wow. that, I don't know. No, nah, I promise you, bro. I'm African, the replay? Man. African keepers don't have to save straight shots, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> bro, that's fake news. That's nah, fake bro, news. The ball, Watch yeah. it again. Watch it again. The ball, is it? The ball's horrid, oh, bro. I'll forgive you for that. It has that, turbulence. Yeah. Like, it has inbuilt turbulence. Ram, kick Ramsdale, it just... Ramsdale's not saving that, that free kick. I promise you. Yeah, horrendous, bro. Horrendous. So, it's meant to be that moment. Obviously, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big, big game. A, yeah. You're potentially going to be the first African mm. nation to be in a semi final. Semis, bro. And you have the opportunity because. You got the pet, you know. It's a bit of a melee in the box. No, bro, it's not a melee, bro. Beforehand, Go uh, cool. There's a bit of a mix-up in the box from the free kick. Okay. But we should score that easily, bro. They've got two men on the line. Yeah, you had a yeah, yeah. Suarez handballs it. Yeah. In situations like that, I know it's not the rules. Just yeah. give us the goal, bro. The the ball's going in. He's on the line, bro. Uh, that's what we used to do in the... Didn't that's enter. what we used on to do. On the line, bro. But didn't the, enter the goal. That's what we used to do in the cage. Bro, man is on the line with both hands up like this. The ball's definitely going into the net. Just give us the goal. But that's not a rule. And that's not the rule. But anyway, sad, I'm confident. Sad. I'm confident same way because it's what? Last minute of the game. And Samoa Jan. Don't be a man down. You got a penalty. Got a penalty. Bruv, Suarez is on the touchline. I remember. Yeah, on the side peeking like that. Yeah. Show me, show me his face. Yeah, yeah, he was like peeking, yeah. yeah. And then man's hit the bar, blood. That's Samoa Jan, bro. Star player. Did he? Do you know what confused me? He was a man. When he used to do penalties, he used to place it. Do you know what confused me? Man's a striker with the number three on the back of his shirt, fam. Yeah, the number striker with number three is very <laughs> unorthodox. I'm sure he took that. He, he told Sunderland he wants the number three shirt as well. Yeah, I think didn't he wear it? They, yeah. they gave him the 33. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very un- I don't know what his reason no, is. No, but have you heard? Sure. I've heard the reasons. The reasons are jokes. Go There's on. different tiers. So one of them is like his big brother, who paid for Ghana as well, wore number three. Uh, one of them was like. What? That's not a reason to wear the <laughs> number three shirt. No, the second reason is. He's a Christian, so he said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yeah? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, 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 that's good. But the third reason he killed me, he said, because three is an important number, because when you're about to do something, you count to three. You say, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, I like that one. I like that one. One, two, but three. Anyways, that's a from great then, reason to wear a number three shirt. That's whose hands you placed the uh, World Cup hopes in, and then obviously he's hit the bar. But then him hitting the bar, obviously I'm hurt. But Suarez celebrating, bro. Oh, he was going when crazy. you've been sent off, rage, rage. But I was, I was upset, bro. You know how much pain you have to be in, yeah. I remember this walking by the beach, tears are streaming down my face, but I'm not making the noise, bro. Imagine that. So wait, so give a paint the picture. Bro, have you ever cried and not made a sound, bro? But tears are streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pain. Pain, bro. Pain the croissant. So did you? So you were you were <laughs> in a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a bar with the ex. The, more family people there, friends? Yeah, family, music industry people, yeah. Bear Ghanaians. Bear Ghanaians. What was that? Like, once, obviously, he's missed the penalty. <laughs> you're thinking, 
Because <laughs> it went to extra time, no? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it went to extra time. Went to extra, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. penalties. And then penalties, yeah. And then when you do eventually lose it on penalties. Yeah, well, the only way I can describe it, yeah, is if anyone says one word wrong, <laughs> anyone can get topped, bro. <laughs> like, like, just bro, you can cut the hands with a knife. Hands. You're just looking for an excuse to fight someone. That's what it was like. It was jubilation. When we got the penalty, celebrating that we've already scored it. I remember this. And their man are just looking like they want to fight each other, bro. Imagine me and you are celebrating together. He's missed. And then I'm just looking at you like you're up now. That's what it was like. I'm going to tell you something, yeah, secretly. No one knows this. So the Nigerians were supporting Uruguay on the law. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, you, know, you know Nigerian Ghana is? Yeah? They've got a rivalry. Yeah, they're, it's a little rivalry, but it's a friendly rivalry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ghana were looking like they were going to win the World Cup, in it? So you got Congo, you got all these other countries <laughs> yeah. supporting Ghana. But you got the Nigerians just like, nah. Because we were close, like with the like, Olympic 96 and all this stuff. But secretly though, because you were like, ah, oh, do you know what, Africans, we have to back it, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. But secretly you're saying. Mm. Secretly. secretly they were like. But I saw my boy, I saw my boy, he's Nigerian, isn't it? And my Ghanaian boy is mad. Nigerian boy is acting, yeah, he's acting crazy, isn't it? As soon as the, the Ghanaian boy started love, Nigerian boy just. <laughs> No, you can't do that. Rage. <laughs> at, at this World Cup coming up in Qatar, I believe you have an opportunity for revenge. Yeah, yeah, in the group stages, group you are playing Uruguay. Mm. Suarez is probably going to be in the Uruguay squad. And I'm hearing that Asamoah Gyan is trying to come back <laughs> out of retirement <laughs> to play for I Ghana. I don't want to see you right there, bro. You don't want to see him there? I don't want to see you anywhere near. You know what it is? I, I don't think the Ghanaian team now is anything that like that Ghanaian team That was a special team. That was a special That's team. why it has That's to happen problem. at that tournament, bro. I'm hearing, and I don't blame them, but mm. I'm hearing like people like Kevin Prince, they were like, I can't do this no more. Like, there was one story I heard where obviously they all got paid for mm. playing mm. <laughs> for the national team and the Ghanaian FA said they're not paying them until the end of the match and players went on strike and they said, no, nah, you have to bring us cash on a plane right now before we play. Oh. So there's been that tension with the government, that kind of stuff. But now it's different. But what I will say is, we may be getting into a new era. People like Tariq Lamptey have pledged allegiance, and I think it could be going in a in a good place. So yeah, now. what's your like? What's your thoughts on that? Like now, because obviously Jose Mourinho was saying that an African team would have won the World Cup by now if these African players picked their mm. actual countries. So you know, now we've seen, uh, like you said, Lamptey and Ketia. Ketia, did, did, yeah. Um, Hudson Odoi. That isn't beneficial, but it's not beneficial. Yeah, but it's, it's Callum, thing. you told me you was gonna do it, so you need to do it. Stop wasting time. <laughs> I think so, he is, though. I think he's gonna do it, but it just hasn't been announced. So that's prom- that's not, now it looks promising. Now, if, if we get players, you know, to do that, it looks promising now. Yeah, of course, but I don't know. I get it from the player's perspective because mm. you want to give yourself the best chance of being successful. Mm. But then you got to think, group-wise, if we all made the same decisions to play for our home countries, where could we be now? So, mm. what would you lot do? Patriotism all the way. You think? 100%. What does that mean? I would pick Serbia, man. <laughs> oh, no, I came here when I was... Say this, say this, yeah. yeah. Where are you from? What, me, Congo. All right, cool. But I do get it. Though. You're the star man. Not just for your country, but in England, you're rated. You're... It's probably Saka for Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're up there. I'm yeah. playing for England. You know you're walking into the England team, bro. I'm playing for England. Or you could be the star man for Congo or Serbia. Again, Serbia all the way. Yeah, he's, he goes to Serbia all the time. I do. The, the reason I play for England... Because if I go and say pass, they're not going to pass me the ball because <laughs> pass means something else in, my, in a language that I don't speak. <laughs> At least you got a choice. I think about a man like Aubameyang, bruv, that, uh, with the Mali national team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aubameyang. Now, okay, you're right. Aubameyang should have probably picked France just because I don't think, like Gabon, I don't think I've ever Gabon, known, yeah. I don't know any other Gabonese player. I do. Um, Lamina? Kanga. Who? Kanga. Is it? Kanga and Lamina, so three. Kanga That's not enough. Red Star Belgrade. Who's in goal? Right Who's in goal for Gambus? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm saying, I understand the, the, okay. the dilemma from the player's perspective yeah, it's if tricky. you're a star player. It's tricky. But it's, I, I think yeah. that's, that's an issue. I mean, not an issue, but it's, it's a topic that mm. happens to a lot of immigrant mm. nations and nation, people that have moved. There's been a lot of mass movement, even like the Balkans. You know, there's a lot of people that are now to which, you know, played for yeah, West Ham. And they could go left Austria. sometimes. I mean, Shakiri plays for Switzerland, but his brother oh, plays yeah, for course. Albania. So it's like, you've got all these sort of stories but where... It's a gamble as well, because obviously players like Danny Welbeck, yeah, they had their time for England, mm. but maybe didn't reach the heights that he should have reached. If he played Ghana, bro, there you go. he'd be the main man. So I think mm. go for the... I just think go for the, 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 the patriotism. 
Maybe there should be a rule where like you can you can change. Yeah. Like even though you've had twenty caps for England, you can go back to Zambia <laughs> and play. Yeah, like, but they should do that. What, right. what stipulations though? Or do both. Z- Zambia. Is that you know? Z- <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Zambia is a stupid thing. Like, you know what I mean? Zambia, Ethiopia. I, I still haven't seen them live on Sky Sports. <laughs> Quickly, because just going back to Asimo Jar, did he make music yeah, straight yeah. after the miss? Baby Jet was his rap name. Baby yeah. Jet. Baby. Asimo Jar. He had a banger with One Day Cole as well, bro, where he started naming girls' names. He was like, Sandra, Linda, Babaka, Monica. <laughs> Why do I feel like I know this song? <laughs> Baby Jet. Well, baby, baby Jet. <laughs> well, he was cold, you know. So what? You feel, so even though he's Mrs. Penny <laughs> and he's making music, like, did all the Ghanaians are like, you know what? We like this, but forget the penalty miss. Let's let's dance with you. We're just vibes, innit? Mm. And don't forget in the World Cup we overachieved. And he's been our top talisman. I think he scored in he's got a record actually. One of the only international players to have scored in consecutive Major tournament. I think he's done like seven in a row. That's close. So yeah, it didn't work happen for Uruguay, but it's Asamoah Jan, bro, he's a legend. You know what I'm saying? Big up Asamoah Jan. And so you're going to be watching that game against Uruguay, seeking a bit of revenge. It'll be sweet, All right? of us are going. And if I see one Nigerian, bro, <laughs> one Nigerian <laughs> <laughs> laughing under their breath, they're bro, under the lick they're for, gonna, you, for you, Do bro. you know why they're going to be laughing? Because Ghana, Ghana beat Nigeria to get to the World Cup, remember? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. That's course, true. Course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So you're looking forward to that game. That, that's but the we highlight. Have to, we have to win it. We if we to. don't get out of the group stage... Karmically, it makes sense. If we don't get out of the group stage, but we beat Uruguay, I'm happy. Well, the next kit is the unforgettable one. So this kit, you know, a shirt that, you know, opens up the door to the great moments and one that just sticks in your head. It's the West Ham 0607 away kit. In terms of, like, design, of kits, it's probably not in my top five. Mm. But that season was a special season. Is this Marlon Hayward, yeah? That yeah, is Marlon, Marlon Hayward. Koncheski. Koncheski yeah. is in the squad as well. Koncheski, left back. Um, left back, absolute baller. Um, we had a dubious, but very inspiring transfer with Carlos Tevez. <gasps> this is yeah. the Tevez Mascarano kit. That, uh, when when breaking news came up with that sign, I was like, "What is this? This is this is crypto." This way before <laughs> this, this something's not crypto. right here. No, uh, the whole football world was united, including West Ham fans, in thinking, "What? How did you get them? Yeah, like, they got them off the dark web." <laughs> as a West Ham fan, bro, and as a man from it's East just London, it made no sense. I know not to ask questions, bro. Tour. They're here. Let's just go. But I knew there was a problem when they signed, and Pardew had them on the bench, bro. Because yeah, that was even Pardew knew, right? Yeah. These man. They can't play, bro. Something's <laughs> <laughs> going down. <laughs> but yeah, Sheffield United try try sue us because obviously they went down and we stayed up. Last so day, need... was it last day against United? Yeah. Right. Ten this is why the kit is I special remember. for me. Because the last 10 games, no, the last, I think six or seven games we went undefeated and it was Kerbishley that, that came in because Pardew got sacked and Tevez started playing, balling out and he was carrying us through every game pretty much single-handedly. It was mainly him and Bobby Zamora up top, and then last game against Man U at Old Trafford, not at Upton Park. I'm thinking, nah, no chance. And then I think the ball comes into him, one, two of Zamora, and finishes it against United at Old Trafford, then we stay up, so. That was when Tevez, number 32, right? Yeah, 32, yeah. yeah. I remember that's where everyone was like, okay, we want that player in the summer. What Beast, player? bro, beast. And then, yeah, Sheffield United went down, so they tried to sue us, and we settled out of court. That's when I knew, rah, we got life. Still, because they were going to deduct points. So is it fair to say those two saved you? Of course. Well, Mascherano, he didn't play so much towards the end. And mm. then he went Liverpool after, didn't he? But yeah. Tevez certainly saved us, 100%. Who, where, where were we going to get them kind of goals from, bro? Well, I don't know how you got those kind of players. <laughs> you could never... <laughs> on Championship Manager or Football Manager at the time, you cannot... <laughs> but Work permit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't get them. <laughs> You can't get yeah. them on a game. How do you get them on a game? <laughs> Not for them Argentinian players, bro. It was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you were 16, 17 mm. at this time. Mm. What was your life like then, watching the Hammers and just in general? What were you up to? Do you know what was sick about my life then? I, w- I moved to Romford when I was 15 mm. and I was going to a school called St. Edwards. But the playing field's backed onto the West Ham training ground. Ah, oh, that's cool. So I imagine I'm just going to get the 86 bus and I'm just seeing man like Nobby Solano and then man just pull out of, of training. It's like, 
I felt connected to the club even more. Mm. And then obviously, start of the season was horrific. We're just getting banged like 6 0 calmly, bro, by teams that shouldn't be beating us 6 0. Um, but yeah, it's known as the great escape. When we started to win and Kerbish, he came in and, and Tevez. Just the, forget the club, the vibe in the area, bro, in Essex slash East London as a whole was like, rah, you think they can do it? And that was just sick to be a part of. Failed my GCSEs, but it's calm, bro. Me too. We stayed up. I'm, I'm with you. We can hold hands there. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed up in a, in a magical way. And obviously, you are a man of faith. Mm. And faith is a big part of your music and, mm. and, your, and your life. Um, when did you become you know, a big follower of Christianity? Well, my I believe, from, I shall My say. family from Ghana. So yeah. I didn't really have a choice when I was younger. We was just getting ch church by force. Sunday yeah. school. Sunday school by force. I used force. to do Sunday school as well. Oh, so, yeah. I used to, go. to be fair, that was, that was enough for my friends. And... The church had a youth club as well. So even yeah. people that weren't really going to church like that, Friday night, we're kicking ball, we're hanging out together. But for me, it sounds weird, yeah. From young, I just always believed in like a higher power, like someone was looking out for me. Mm. I would look at, I don't know, stuff that's like fake, but stuff like trees and plants and that kind of stuff. And I think, right, I actually believe someone created this. Um, and then when I was 15, a lot of people call it coincidence. But my friend got struck by lightning in the playground at school. And we was all in the playground at the same time. Mm. And I kind of fell to the floor as well. Got up, realised he'd been struck. Lightning bolt actually went through his body. He got rushed to the hospital. And then I remember that was the first time I prayed for myself. I was like, God, just help Izzy, that's his name, like come through. And he made it through. So in my mind, I was like, wow, I feel like my prayers made a difference. Mm. And then from then I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to call myself a man of faith for myself, not just because my parents told me to. Um, but I was still like a bit shy about it because back then, even in football, like the Muslim players, they're just bait with it, bro. Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. I'm Muslim, straight. But I feel like the, a lot of the Christian players, a lot of Christian people were just a bit low key with it. But I think, yeah, I was just being true to myself, man. And it came out in the music and, and what I stand for. That's a, that's a big point you said there because it's like, even me, like the same like, African family mm -hmm. and going to church and stuff. And when I used to pray and I used to tell my friends, let's pray. They used to look at me like, what are you doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. hard to kind of fit in. Because like, you're, you're right, the Muslims, it's like, okay, we... Because yeah. they've said it from day, like, we're praying. Yeah. They'll, you'll be playing football, they'll go and pray and it's normal. Mm. But when the Christians do it, it's like, what, what, what are you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for you to stick to that and use it with the music as well, mm. it's massive. Because me, I was... I, I thought that if I carry this on, I'm not going to be able to fit in with my friends. Yeah. Mm. I think that I balance, think, Yeah, it? I thought that when I was younger, <laughs> secondary school and that. But you know what really, like, Changed my mind was when I'm one on one with my boy, mm. it's calm, bro. But when we're uh, in a group audience, setting, the crowd, you know what I'm saying, crowd. man, try to hold it down a little bit. Yeah. So I thought if everyone's doing this anyway, I'm seeing man at church or he's getting mosque and it's normal. This is me, bro. Yeah, like, it's calm, isn't it? And all your friends around you, I'm guessing, accepted it and, and just. Yeah, obviously, banner, yeah. which like I'm a fan of because yeah, okay. it's what gets us through school, isn't it? It's like, yeah. It's part and parcel of, of friendship. But yeah, ultimately, all of my friend groups, like some of them atheists, Muslim, Christians, but we just have respect for what people choose to believe in, man. See, this is the, this is the, the battle I have with my auntie, because me and my aunties are very religious. So I'm a DJ. Mm. So I've, I've, had a, I've, had a de I've had a dick in my house since I was like 10. Mm. But I'm DJing, playing all this hip hop tunes and that. And they're like, listen, cut that out. Play gospel music. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, I'd started to, right? But how am I going to DJ at wireless in all these places? <laughs> That's so that, that was my thing. You know what I mean? So I, it, I was I was I was stuck. Let's play Kurt Franklin. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so because yeah, yeah. you know what? Don't get me wrong. Gospel music is there's there are times when at home with the family we watch gospel music, especially yeah, like in America, and you, the feeling you get from mm. watching that stuff is like wow. It's like mm. it's uplifting. It's uplifting. But I think that back then Tasha Cobbs and all them them yeah, lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was more like. Boxed off. So mm. if you're if you're a Christian, you listen to this. Mm. If you're not, you listen to that. And there was even a DVD, bro, called The Truth Behind Hip Hop, yeah? And they told everyone, if you're a Christian, go home, throw away all your Daisy that. CDs and yeah. your CDs. But I think now, you could be a Christian and be side so by free. side with like Stormzy and Dave and them, man. So mm. it's it's more fluid now, which I'm a fan of, man. Mm. So you can still be a Christian and play flipping whatever you want to play at wireless, bro. You heard that? <laughs> That's auntie. a boss that told me that, auntie. <laughs> Please don't tell me that again, man. And have you got this? Have you got these kits like that we're talking about? Yeah, so you've got yeah. them all. The Kanye, the, the Kanye one yeah. was the only one I didn't have. But shouts to, to Classic Football Shirts for sending me that. Shouts to um, our friends at Classic Football Shirts.
I'm gonna go to the last shirt, the named one. So the player that you have in the back of your shirt. And you went with John Pantsil. <laughs> yeah. That is niche. It is niche, but I'm Ghanaian. You went with West John Pantsil. Let me explain, bro. I'm Ghanaian and I support West Ham. Right. Obviously, we've had like Andre Ayu, like mm. credible footballer and that. John Pantsil, great footballer, but he's just, he's vibes, bro. He didn't actually play that much for us. I think he played like less than 20 times, but some of the stories that I heard about him, I was like, yeah, that's my Ghanaian brother, bro. Imagine my boy told me, yeah, he played for West Ham at the time. In the gym, you know, um, leg press machine, yeah? Yeah. John Pants was coming, first day, yeah? The first day he landed, he's approached the leg press machine with his hands. And, he said, <laughs> <laughs> and he's put the weights, but he's pressing the leg press machine like this with his hands, bro. Oh my God. When I heard that story, I was like, yeah, that's my Ghanaian brother. So that's you just get way into the leg press way. That's the leg press machine that you do that. No, you're like this, brother. You're pushing it. Your legs like this. Down or up? Because it's no up, 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 up. Doing like that. So man's going like this. So he's going like and that. He's pushing it up like that <laughs> with his hands, bro. That's what, what, I is saying, that yeah, that's what is that working on? What is that working on? What is that working on? I'm not getting it. That's my guy. Works your tries. Probably shoulders as well. We're like that. That is epic. We're like that. That's we like. Would, yeah, we do something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, we like, we like, we like people that do. But for me, backwards. like, he's just a player that brings me joy, bro. Number mm. one, he's representing my country. Mm -hmm. He's playing for the team I support. Mm. And he's just vibes and a joke, man, bro. Is there any other stories apart from the leg press machine? Because I just said... Nah, that was, uh, that was, that was the main one that, that gave me jokes. Um, but he was just a character. I've heard times where after training, first few weeks, you know you're sorting out your yard. Man, just getting to the 86 bus stop and getting bus home, bro. What? <laughs> See, man, just getting to 86 and getting bus home, bro. Yeah. That's us just doing normal things. Yeah, sometimes when I don't have like a spoon for like my like pasta, tuna pasta, sweet corn from Tesco, I'll just get like one of my debit cards. <laughs> just... You gotta eat, haven't you? Hey! hey! Jamie, oh, I'm not eating tuna with a HSBC like, card. Whatever I have, it could be Oyster, it could be Debit. Debit <laughs> may be the least favourite because it has it can get stuck between the numbers. La, I've finished. Oyster card. I will good, say this. It's smooth. I can see the logic. Yeah, because you're like I'm hungry, no spoon. I thought it came in a pack underneath a sticker. But uh, it wasn't what happens there. after you just find tissue to wipe it down or whatever? Yeah, get yeah, tissue, bit of water, maybe lick it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you just dig in, bro, and it works. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. When you pull up to a hotel and you hand them your card, I feel sorry for the person taking your, your card, bro. <laughs> oh, no, beans. it's calm. Like, and especially now, the HSBC cards aren't as bubbly. Like, it's actually much more smooth. They just have two dots. Like, it's really I've got, got two the plates over the sort code, you know. I reckon maybe HSBC <laughs> have gone. Uh... People are eating tuna pasta with this. Nah, Pantso went, went on them levels still. Nah, I feel I like Pantso, we like can that. bond. And like, sometimes I used to like... They should meet. Let's say at home, <laughs> I'm feeling very lazy or something. I, I'm out and I don't know, I've got chips or something. I don't know where to put the ketchup. I'd put it on my hand. So I'd squeeze it out on my hand. And then really? i just dip it off my hand. <laughs> back, to, back, to, need... back to Pantso. Back to Pantso. What yeah. is the weird things you've done in life? Leave a comment below. What, now, what is the most John Pantso thing you've what done in life? What is the most John Pantso thing, Django? Obviously, you've done the... <laughs> but what, because I feel like, I, in case John Pantso comes across this, I need to say, he was a bad boy for Ghana. Yeah. He was prime caffeine yeah. for Ghana more mm. time. It was just mm. for West Ham, I didn't really... Mm. Work. And there's a few players like that. We got we had Yarmolenko. He was all right oh, for yeah, us. Yarmolenko was mm. decent. Whenever he played for his national you, team, yeah, bro. Um, world class. Man. Class. World so. class he was. Definitely, definitely class. World class, man. I mean, you know, African culture. Mm. Let's move to culture. Mm -hmm. Like African culture had a huge impact mm -hmm. on, um, you know, Britain. Football, music, food, sport. How's that been for you, like, growing up, you know, a Ghanaian boy in London, seeing African culture have such an impact? I'll be real. It, was, it wasn't good, bro. No. Till like year nine. I hear, I, you know I remember high nine? school. I remember secondary, yeah. Cizo DG, bruv. He brought out antenna. Uh, uh, she didn't uh, do uh, me well. Uh, yeah. Went mad. Antenna. All of a sudden, everyone rated Ghanaians, bro. Before that, it was like, go home, ABC, African bum scratcher, all this. It wasn't cool, bro. You I used to tell my boys I was caught a Jamaican. What, what do you think that was? Like, I actually remember that. Mm. I remember, obviously, I'm, well, Balkan, mm. Serbian, but I remember in school, my school was very multicultural. I do remember the Jamaicans and the Caribbeans, shall I say, sort of throwing, I don't know, I mean, insults about being from Africa. There was mm. that sort of thing in mm -hmm. second. Do you reckon that was? That was, that, for me, that was my pipe lunchbox. Okay. So <laughs> one thing I realised when I was young, 
was <laughs> when West Indians came over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. they adapted mm. to <laughs> the English people. The English way of life. Sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Fruit. Yeah. Okay. Ribena. Yeah. Iron brew. All this stuff. Yeah. Me now, my packed lunch now. Now you remember the little box, square box? I had the Thomas, yeah. Thomas Stack Engine. Didn't <laughs> cool, so I'm in the dinner hall. Obviously, I'm not West yeah. Indian. I'm not English, I'm African. Mm. So everyone's in, so, okay, he's African, let's see. <laughs> Man's got jollof. off. Now remember the palm oil is leaking. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you know put a cling film over This is what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, no, I was leaking through yeah. the lines of the packed lunch. Yeah, yeah, so now yeah, like, yeah, everyone's yeah. looking like, <laughs> like, like, like I cut a hamster in half. <laughs> so they, they, they think that that's a hamster. <laughs> and me, to fit in, what am I saying? I said, yeah, it is a it's hamster, right? Wait, why hamster? And it didn't work. <laughs> 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 Bro, you know how hard it was. My, my parents didn't care about that. What's that, fam? Yeah, what's that? When the whole uh, when the whole school's looking at your, <laughs> it was hard. Why, we were different. A book, there's mm. a book that came out mm. in America. It's why all the black people sit together at the cafeteria, mm. and it's because of that, bro. Because we know where I'm going. We know in it. Yeah. So I, I just, found out when you're with other Africans mm. in school, it's calm. You have an immense sense of pride. Mm-hmm. But when you're with the people whose country it is, and they're saying. Nah, you don't belong or that don't belong here or what's that or that's weird. You ain't gonna speak up, bro. Until yeah. you have something that you can cling on to. And for me, that was Afrobeats, bro. And when everyone started enjoying Afrobeats, I was like, yeah, yeah it's our time. You know, you know who changed the game? Mm. No, I, 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 I was. <laughs> bro, you're a legend. I was very early. Legend. You're a le- you think legendary. I'm joking? No, I've been on well. flipping the Sunday brunches, big BBC. I'm more nervous and gas to, to sit down with you two, bro. No way. <laughs> because you're for the man, then, bro. <laughs> You made people like me think, yeah, fam, watch this, bro. Yeah. See how my man's going on. Yeah, obviously, the, that was bricker, on top. Man like Bricker, fam. Bricker, <laughs> bricker. bricker. <laughs> Big legend. I remember, like, I think, yeah, early Afrobeats days with the banj, mm. when I did a little Azonto dance. My, my Ghanaian boy taught me it. Well, I, now looking back on it, I think it was, I did it quite badly. But that was, a, I think that was the first Afro beat song to mm. actually break charts yeah, yeah, commercial yeah. in the UK. So it's, mm. always, it's always weird to have been part of that journey of yeah. African culture, myself. Mm. It's and been for fascinating. Me it's special, man. Like, I've got a kid now, one and away. I feel like, do you know what? It's great that they can go to school now and have more pride in who they are, mm. like their Ghanaian heritage, where we had to almost like hide that for mm. a moment. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, oh, man. I and was... also, so, Song of the Summer, Last Last. I know it's a Nigerian, mm. Nigerian artist, Burner Boy, tube, but that mm. song is humongous. Mm. It's humongous. huge, isn't it? Mm. The thing about that though is what's sick is man are singing burner boy tunes, whiskey tunes, like Susie and so- Gunfop and not even knowing what the lyrics yeah. mean. Though. Even me. But they sing. <laughs> I mean that personally, <laughs> I'm saying. personally that song does my head in because I don't know what he's saying. Yeah. And it, and but everyone's saying Sing it. Like, it and yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, you know what I mean? You just gotta like mouth it, pretend. You just mouth it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, man. Big tune, man. So when we talk about African kits over the years, you know, they've been unique. I know Ghana have come with some serious patterns. Mm. The Nigeria top. Always from, patterns. You know, 96. You know, stylish. But do you remember when the Cameroon uh, came yeah. with the vests? Cold, man. Like, we're, we're up there. When it, we're, we, we've got some sort of fashion. When it I think it's like source. It. I think it's like just an inbuilt source. I was going to say the, um, the joy, the kind of vibrance that you get with African teams, stuff like the celebrations. I feel like when you're making a kit or thinking about a kit, you're thinking about the people that are going to be wearing it and the mm. kind of vibe it gives. And I think all of those things connected make, make the kits some to remember. Ghana's had some great ones. Senegal, Cameroon. Mm, Senegal. Obviously, Nigeria knocked it out of the park. Um, but yeah, I just think it's to do with the vibrancy of, of the teams that, that rock it, man. Do you remember when I think the Nigeria top got released? I can't remember what, what World Cup was it, 20? Yeah, uh, Russia, 2018. And that one went mad. Everybody, mad. Went everybody had West that. End and just it was just sold out within a couple of minutes. 2018, that's when I first, I remember, yeah, being at a festival in Cornwall, yeah, and seeing a white guy that was about 13 with a Nigeria kit. That's when I said to myself, now the kit thing's gone mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's changed. Yeah, so. It's sort of collecting people though, isn't it? It's quite cool, I think, seeing people from different cultures mm. wear each other's shirts. Like, I've got bloody yeah, everything. I've even got a North Korea shirt. How many have you counted? Last count? Around 200. Madden. Last count, I count as 186. 
And then I, went, I did a little pop-up shop where I sold a few. Is it? People like, came down, it was really fun. Um, but since then, obviously, I've gotten some new ones. So I, I, I reckon around like 200 mark. When was it? When did it start being like a thing? So obviously, you bought kits when you were younger. Yeah. But then when did you say, All right, I'm collecting kits now? I don't think it was ever like a conscious I'm collecting. Mm. It was sort of, it was happening through, obviously from young, mm -hmm. like a kit a season, like Liverpool or Brazil, you know, a World yeah, Cup yeah, kit. Yeah, yeah. Then I started going to Serbia and you couldn't get those kits here. So I'd be like, oh, I need to get the Red Star or the Yugoslavia or Serbia, no. you know, little. But then I started working in football. Mm. So then I started getting them from shoots. And then it was like, oh, I've made a bit of money. And for me, I always just, I basically just overcompensated things I couldn't get as a kid. So I was like, I was like that. I'm getting kits. With Air Maxes. I'm getting uh, the Nike Yeezys that I couldn't get. I'm get so I, I sort of filled those gaps of, of maybe voids that I couldn't before. So it was a bit of nostalgia, I think that's what you say. Like, and then I started getting the kits like, oh, that kit in 2000 that I couldn't get when I was 12. That's so funny, man. I'd buy I'm like it that as well, when bro, I'm 30. Man. I'm like that as well. I remember sort of, I, I yeah. wanted Air Max 97s for time when I was a youth, but I could never afford them. My parents didn't want to buy them. So, yep. As soon as I got a bit of pee for myself. Getting them infinitely when you're young. <coughs> but I think now I've calmed down. Now I've calmed down, definitely. But I'm like, I fill those gaps. I don't need any more. I'm but, sticking. I'm, I'm like, I'm like. well, I'm, I'm not calming down. I'm going to try and get, I'm gonna, I need to get up to 200 football shirts like you. Mm. But I started buying NFL tops. But the oh, problem so I was it. having oh. is people are coming up to me. I don't watch NFL. <laughs> So a guy is saying, hey, Sherman, <laughs> line of scrimmage. Like, what? Line of scrimmage, man. Did you see yesterday? So you're what you're talking it, about. You're just I'm just wearing, I'm just, so I said, you know what? I ain't wearing these NFL tops, man. I don't <laughs> understand what line of scrimmage means. That's tight. So, you know what I mean? coming up to you trying to have the deep, deep <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> You're wearing your right top, and everyone's like, oh, you're right. I'm going to give you a story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Go wear a hockey top. Someone will come with a name. Bradley, Bradley John, you see the same? Like what? <laughs> Amazing. Man. Oh, that's oh too man, funny. that was one of my favorite segments I think we've done so far. The John no, Pencil penciling. Oh. Let us know, man. What John Pencil? Wait, wait, wait. What's did? the most John Pencil thing you've done? Though? Yeah, it said. Oh yeah. me? Yeah. You must have a few, mate. The most I've got so many, man. The most it's like the most embarrassing thing. But no, it's embarrassing. It... Just I'd say creative. Am I aware of this? <laughs> Or am I unaware? It could be both. <laughs> what, what would you, because you've done some peculiar things in life. Oh, I don't. Like this is the perfect end to the show. Yeah. Whatever you're going to say. I told you mine, and they are yeah, a bit peculiar, but I feel like you could. Bit peculiar. Your one's mad, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Nah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> the debit card. Nah. Yeah, it's creative. The thing about it, it's creative. It's just, you know, <laughs> unconventional, unorthodox. I, I, I'm probably just, you know, I, I, this is my favorite one, it's because I was unaware. But it's my stepdad buying me uh, men's boxer shorts <laughs> and giving giving them to me as shorts <laughs> as I was like 12. So I'm walking around with um, Arsenal boxer for men with all the gut, you know the, 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 the cannons all around the shorts <laughs> and four big buttons. And I'm thinking they're basketball shorts on me. So all these adults are laughing. Hey. <laughs> and I'm, I'm rocking these shorts hard, <laughs> hard, bro. <laughs> Must have done, bro. <laughs> so you used oh, to wear yeah. men's boxers. I used to wear men's boxers and shorts. So I had boxers underneath. Them. Yeah. And I had pants underneath those boxers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. It's a I bit know, unaware, I but I, <laughs> I didn't know. Why well, is there ones that you're aware of? Because people are laughing. I was waiting for a time and someone said to me, You know, you're wearing like men's underwear, innit? I'm like, Okay, like, mind your business. And I thought, in and out, like, it, was in my, it was in my head for time men's underwear, men's underwear. Oh, and I think I went, I went, I what went kind of the material catalog. though? Were they fitting like long johns? Brother, they, they were. They oh. were. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Those boxes are the worst. You know they, don't they, you, they don't let you breathe. They don't let you breathe, those boxes. Uh, boxes so, shouldn't go. Uh, I've actually got tears in my eyes, fam. Uh, don't tell no one, though. Nah, big up your stepdad, though. Real G. Nah, don't big him up, man. <laughs> that wasn't even a prank. Where's I it? mean, what a chat. That was Governor B. Absolute legend. Um, it was a pleasure having you. No, I love for having me, man. Appreciate it. Big thank you to Class Football Shirts for, you know, giving us all the shirts. Of course, and, and um, this has been stripped to you by William Hill. That's it. 18 plus, gamble responsibly.